Hello everyone, welcome back to software design pattern series. In this video, I am going to talk about the memento design pattern. What is the use of it and how we can implement it in Python. Honestly, I also got to know this name very recently, but I was using this pattern unknowingly in my projects. So we will understand uh, all those things uh, in this video itself. So let's get started. What is the memento design pattern? The memento design pattern is a behavioral design pattern that allows us to save and restore the state of an object without violating its encapsulation. So why is this memento pattern useful? Where exactly it is useful? So the memento pattern is useful in many situations such as when you want to undo the changes of an object or redo the changes as well. For example, word processor or any text editor which might be using the memento design pattern to allow us to undo their changes into the document and you can also redo that right so that is one use case where it is useful second place so second place is when you need to be able to save the state of an object for later restoration for example uh, a game which might be using memory design pattern to save the state of an object of the game so whenever you uh, played some game and you uh, stop that game right and you come back that you should be able to play the game from where you left and for that purpose you should be able to restore the state of an up game so that's when you can use this pattern then there is another use case where you can use it that is you can share the state of an object with other objects such as database database might be using this memento pattern to allow different parts of database to share the state of a row right so those are the places, those are the situations where this memento pattern is useful. Now let's talk about implementation. So to implement this memento pattern in Python, you will need to create three different classes. First, originator class. Second, caretaker class. And third is memento class. So what is originator class? So before everything, I would like to explain memento class first because Memento class is nothing but represents the snapshot of the state of the originator object. Okay, so that you can say it's a snapshot class. That's all. Which stores the state of at a time. One state only. Okay, now second class is originator class. What it does? That actually the original class which creates the state which you want to save and restore back. Then the third class is caretaker class, which manages all those mementos. So it creates new mementos, stores them, and you can retrieve them whenever needed. So these are the three classes we have to implement. So I'm not going to write the uh, code in this video itself. So we can reduce the time of this video and you can understand as well. Okay, I will explain uh, surely uh, line by line. So this is the memento class where we are just taking state as an argument which can be instance of any class. Suppose it can be a string, integer or probably any, any custom class object as well. Okay. Now the second class is originator which is the original class where we are creating the states. We are setting the states. Then we are also implementing these three methods specifically. To set the state, uh, we can also get the memento, you can restore the memento. So why this set state? It's nothing but you have to understand this is specifically implemented for explaining this pattern. Basically, you can uh, change the state using any method here inside this originator class. But for understanding purpose, I am adding this method set state. So whenever I want to change the value of the state, I'll just use this set state method and I will paste the new string. Okay. Now get memento is nothing but creating a um, snapshot of the state of this objects itself. Okay. And restore memento what it does when you pass the memento object, it will take the state value of that object and set it here in this property. So original class object will be restored. Now, caretaker, there is a third class, which is managing all the mementos. 
so here there are two ways of doing this one is for just uh, storing the memento and restoring back and suppose you want to implement undo and redo probably you can maintain two list or you can set two stack one is for undoing the uh, data because undo always does in a stack way right last in first out so whatever last snapshot you added that can be get out so there so you can implement undo and redo method instead of get memento so here we are just using uh, storing the state and restoring back that's all we have implemented here so add memento method will help you to add the memento in this mementos list and whenever you want to restore back you will use this get memento method to get back that memento and pass that into this restore memento method so you can restore back that value of that memento all right so this is the main method which i have implemented and uh, we will check how all those three works together and implements this pattern on in python okay so i have created one object of originator class and then one caretaker is for caretaker class now originator so specifically you will not create instance of memento outside this pattern because memento object will be created here only only one place you are not going to exclusively create an instance out of uh, those three classes now as you can see here uh, we are just setting the state first time so this is my name is hardik patel so you can see the spelling mistake then i have done is i have take the snapshot using this get memento method which will give me the object of memento class and which i am going to add into this list of mementos using caretaker objects add memento method right so i am just adding that memento that means snapshot and which i can use to restore back now before uh, changing the state i am just trying to printing out what is the current state so current state should be my name is this one right uh, this string should be the current state now i am changing the state and now i am setting this value as a state so when you print this again current state it should print this one now what we want to check here how we can re restore back that state so basically you will use this restore memento method but inside that you have to pass the memento object and how can you get that memento object using this get memento method of this caretaker class so get memento method expect an index of the memento suppose it can you can have uh, multiple mementos suppose there are 10 mementos already available and you want to restore uh, one of them uh, not the last one or first one but suppose you want to uh, restore the second last one so you can provide the index that way and you can pass that ob index and you will get that object and that object will be passed to restore memento method and that will change the state of original class coming from this memento and now if i print current state after restoring this time it should restore back to this one because this is the snapshot we stored in this memento list okay now let's run it and check how it works so as you can see first time it printed this is the string right second time it printed this one because we changed the state using this st set state method and then we restore back using this restore memento method and now it is again back to this string okay so this is how you can implement basically uh, you can have this uh, state of any kind of class object like string and you can have custom object as well right so this is how you can implement now i will talk about some drawbacks here because so this as you can see this is the memento object it can become large if the original object has a lot of state then the moment object will definitely grow and become large right so this can use a lot of memory and slow down the performance of your application so you have to keep in mind while using this the moment object can be fragile uh, so the moment object should not be modified by anything other than this caretaker object or originator object so if the moment object is modified then it may be possible to restore it sorry it may not be possible to restore the originator object to its original state 
and this memento pattern can be difficult to understand sometimes uh, especially for beginners because it involves two different objects like originator and caretaker and the relationship between these two objects is not always clear here you can see it's very clear right now so i think everyone should be able to understand this now but still it can become sometimes confusing if you implement that way so there are some tips i would like to uh, say uh, like when to use right so the memento pattern should only be used when it is necessary to save and restore the state of an object if you do not need to save and restore the state of an object then there is no need to use again if you use this memento pattern too often it can make your code more complex and difficult to understand then there is third tip i would like to give you that is memento pattern should be used in conjunction with other design patterns such as singleton design pattern and the factory design pattern this pattern can help you to create more robust and maintainable application okay so so that's all from this video i hope you would be able to use this pattern in your projects wisely if you find this video helpful i request you to hit the like button and subscribe this channel as it will help me a lot Thank you for watching and see you soon in the next one.